Here we are at the repo for Alpaca Device SDK. Here in, in the uh, README is a link to the documentation. In particular, there's a link to the Quick Start section in that doc. Let's go there. I'm going to skip showing how to clone and get the repository into Visual Studio Code. You can use your own tool. But that's the first thing we're going to do. Once it's been cloned, we can take a quick look at the files that come from the repo, the most important of which are the device files. This is all of the pieces that actually make up the running rotator sample. I should point out right now, because people somehow have missed this, that there's a set of templates for all of the different Alpaca slash ASCOM devices. Anyway, we're going to take this folder now and just put it on the root of our D drive and uh, run this bare. Config.toml has port 5555. That's okay with me. We're not going to bother with the virtual environment right now, and I've already installed Falcon and TOML. Those are the only two packages we need. So let's go with step six. We've copied the, D, the device folder out of the repo that we cloned and put it right at the root of D just to keep it separate and make this easy to understand. Here are the files that make up the package. Okay, here we are in a shell in the same place. I'm doing this on Windows because video recording, video production is pretty tough on the Raspberry Pi, where I did most of the development of this. But this is a much better platform for doing the video. So here are our files again, and all we need to do is Python app.py. Now you don't see anything. Reason being, this device is meant for, I mean, the, the package is meant to be used on a device with no console, and so it logs everything. And we'll come back to the log in just a sec. But now the, the simulator is running, the sample is running, so now let's go do confirmation test. I should have mentioned that the conform U tool is available on the ASCOM GitHub page, which is also linked from here on the ASCOM website, which I should point out is there. And a lot of people don't know that's there or don't stop off for info. So anyway, you can find it in the Alpaca developers info. <clears throat> That'll take you to the ASCOM uh, GitHub. I'm sorry. Yeah, GitHub repo page and then this is the conform tool and that's what we'll be using right now okay here we are at the conform universal tool first thing we have to do is select our device type and then let it get discovered so we'll select a rotator there it discovered our rotator i'll just pick that one for lack of anything better and we'll start our test You can see it's simulating a rotation, so it's showing that it's actually moving. It's looking like a real rotator here. Okay, there we have it. No errors, warnings, or issues. The entire test passed. Some of these were quite time consuming, so I cut the scent cut them out here so you wouldn't be bored. Anyway, it did it. Now let's take a look at the alpaca protocol check this is checks the actual alpaca uh, packet structures and how it responds and the types of exceptions and so forth and let's have a look at that okay it passed as you can see, and you can study this in more detail later, it does a lot of send, sending of trash to the uh, rotator to see what kind of um, exceptions are returned and checking to see that it responds uh, the way it should. So it did pass that. One more thing here, we have discovery diagnostics. And you can study this. I'm not going to take you through it all, but the point is that uh, it it responded the way it would expect. And anyway, we saw it when we uh, did a select device. It comes up on its local host or loopback adapter, and also the the actual uh, network address that it comes on. So, 
so that it can be seen from both places. Anyway, so we've done what we we've done everything for the first section of the quick start, which is to see that it works. And we've exercised it. And then I would assume that uh, you would now want to go look and see a little bit more detail. So that'll be the next thing we're going to do. Uh, here we have some instructions on how to create a driver for the first time. I've tried to make this as simple as possible. Uh, and um, I'm not going to take you through every bit of this, but I'm going to give you a guided tour of the uh, of, of the development environment here and point this out and we can look and see and go back and forth and see how that works. So to create your own driver, the process is pretty straightforward. We're looking in the device folder and the first thing we would do is remove the rotator module and replace it with dome, assuming we are going to make a dome driver. So let's do that. And we will remove rotator and we'll remove the rotator device also because that's our back end uh, module that um, implements the hardware. And from the templates, we'll take dome and copy that and come up here and paste it here. So now we have dome in here. Dome.py is where all of the dome interface is contained. The rest of the of the modules here are just boilerplate, but we have to edit some of the others to tell them about the dome being the type of device. So let's first of all open up as it says in the uh, in the thing we're gonna we're supposed to open up the dome and look at the dome metadata and fix that for whatever we want. So let's just take a quick look at that with dome open. Uh, we shall look down here and here's the metadata. You would change this to suit whatever your dome is, the name and the version and all that. One thing I should point out, this device ID must be unique, globally unique. And I've left uh, a uh, URL for an online GUID generator. You just generate one and put it in there. So there it all is. You can probably figure this out. I should also point out that max dev would be zero unless you are going to support multiple instances of this dome device. You could have two domes and your alpaca device could support multiple instances of a dome if you wanted to. This would be more appropriate for a focuser or something. But anyway, that's what max dev is there. That's the maximum device number. They start with zero. All right, what's the next thing we need to do? Now we have to open app.py and tell it that we're doing a dome and not a rotator. All righty. Come up here and the first thing we do is to import dome here. The next thing, and you notice these big blocks, which are something that uh, you can look for elsewhere. But we'll just follow the directions here for each ASCOM device. Dome.logger equals logger. This is the master logger, which can be shared amongst all of your uh, devices and instances. So you're giving that. And then for each ASCOM device here, this is where all of the endpoints are wired up to the Falcon server so that an incoming uh, request for an endpoint gets converted into a call to the uh, responder. And I'll show you that in a minute. But in any case, we'll put dome here and here. And that's it. We'll save that. I should mention that this init routes function that's in app.py is kind of a magic deal. It was fun to write. What it does is it inspects the module and looks for every class in there. And the classes are the responders for each API endpoint. So you have a class for each member of the interface, which is the endpoint and the responder, the Falcon responder. So it inspects it 
and then goes through and creates the API for that endpoint and then wires it up as a route. So this is totally, I mean, if you've ever written anything else in this style, you know you have to write, wire up every single URL and there's all kinds of chances for errors and so forth. This just does it by inspection and you don't have to worry about it at all. A one line call and only four lines of code. That's pretty cool. Okay, what's next? This is the last step. Make some edits to management.py. As you might guess, from Dome, Okay, remember when we uh, changed the metadata here in Dome? Now we're telling, giving management, the management functions, a chance to get to the descriptive information about the Dome. And what else? Find class configure devices. This one I want to spend just a few minutes with because it's important how that works. Find the configure devices. Here we go. Now that's going to have to change to dome metadata. Now, let me spend just a minute looking at this. Add one for each device type and instance served. So this is the management when you when you do a discover, it calls to find all of the types of devices and all of the instances of each type. So this is an array. Each element of the array consists in this little dictionary that has the name, the type, the number, and that magic ID. If you were to, to do another dome, like you were to make a driver for two domes, you would give the, the you'd repeat this with a device number of one and then give it a different name. I'm sorry, just a device number of one. And so you would have two unique types. If you had rotator and dome, you'd have rotator metadata dot name, etc. And you'd have zero. And if you had two rotators, you'd have a number one of those. The point is each one of these things is an instance of a device type and instance of that device. So, but for this, for the purposes of this, there's really nothing to do but just change the rotator metadata to dome metadata and we're done because we only have one dome and one, one device, which is a dome, and one instance of that device. Okay, the skeleton of your driver is all finished. Obviously, you're going to have to wire it into your actual physical dome logic, but this is everything you have to do to make this skeleton into a dome driver skeleton. Now let me give you a quick tour of dome.py and show you around a little bit. But before I do that, one thing I want to point out that's really important is this developer roadmap. This is a description of the structure and the functions inside each of the device interface implementation modules such as dome.py, rotator.py, etc. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to look through this info in the context of looking at the instrument implementation uh, modules like dome.py. A lot of things are explained here that you will want to know about before you get too deep into this. All right, let's see here. Let me make this a bit bigger. Let's take a property. Something like at home. When the Falcon server gets an URL for dome, it, 
encoded in that will be the device number. That would be for multi-instance devices. The fact that it's a dome and it's looking for a property at home. Falcon will call on GET because properties use GET requests. First thing it does is check to see if the device is connected. If it's not connected, you obviously don't know if it's at home. So you call your hardware layer to find out if it's connected. And if that's not the case, it will fire back to the client a JSON response, which is a not connected exception. This is all pre-done inside this, and there's no value to it. And in the case of, of a valueless well, this is an exception, so it won't, uh, it'll just give an exception back. If it's connected, the next thing you have to do is call your hardware layer to find out if it is or is not at home. And that gets turned into a response, a JSON property response for either true or false. If in the process of getting this property, reading it from your device hardware, you run into a snag and it raises an exception, it will come back here, the exception itself will be picked up here, and it will be turned into a proper alpaca driver exception, but then EX will get expanded into a proper, nice, multi-level uh, uh, exception in the JSON. Let me show you what that looks like. So here we are in the developer roadmap. I showed you and said I, I was, it was very important. And there is an example of a driver exception with ver, both verbose and concise exceptions. You have a way to change this. It's an option in the settings for the server. But um, here's what an exception looks like when uh, it, you, the EX gets expanded. You can see that you get a nice big error message. It, this is a test with uh, the rotator where move absolute failed and then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it shows you what how detailed the exception can be if it comes back from your hardware. So all you have to do is signal something from your hardware. In this case, it was a runtime error, a Fal I'm sorry, a, a Python runtime error. It bubbled up into this um, responder right here. It came out of your hardware layer. It never made it to this, of course. Instead, it got into the in here and it put, put together a property response with um, a uh, driver exception. And that exception class is also part of the boilerplate. And it put together that nice, detailed exception message. You don't have to do any of this stuff. That's what I mean. I tried to keep this as simple as possible. All right, now let's go look at a put or a method. They come in as puts, and in the case of these puts, and you can look at the alpaca docs, the parameters are in form data. Uh, it looks like a web form, basically. It's encoded that way, and that's just how JSON works. So uh, it's encoded, and there's a boilerplate function here get request field it checks capitalization spelling but it doesn't check range but it in this case it will get you a string of the value that it you want it the dome to slew to the angle if there's any problem it will raise a 400 bad request you never see it it never comes back and your client gets exactly the correct exception that's all taken care of in this boilerplate and you don't even have to to set a try or anything it just it, it'll call this and if it doesn't work it comes out boom and it's done as a 400. Oh, I should mention also, it does the same thing here. These pre-process requests checks things for uh, goodness. Basically, it catches trash and it looks to see that the device number is in range and so forth. I forgot to do that before, but oh well. Anyway, now that we have the azimuth string, which is what the client is asking us to, the angle at which the client is asking us to slew the dome, angle to which, then we convert it to integer. Well, if this is trash, we'll catch that and you'll end up saying this string is not a valid number. So we have to check that. 
You don't get everything for free here. And then finally, we now know we have a real uh a real number and then because when i made these templates i didn't make them by hand i used a generator so i just say now go in here and check the angle which would be anywhere from um zero up to 359.0 no, less than 360 and greater than or equal to zero right so now we've and we would again return invalid value exception if the uh, azimuth was out of range you have to put that in there. Finally, we call our physical hardware to do it. Well, if it works, then we just say the method worked and we get a 200 and the client's happy. If there's a problem trying to, to slew to azimuth, as in the dome says, no, I can't do that. It, it, remember, it doesn't wait until it finishes slewing. It, this is only this call is only to start the slew. So, but if it can't do that, we're going to get an exception and come down here. And this is the same thing that I pointed out above for the get. You get a nice exception, the the, the right kind of exception, and if necessary, or you know, it'll it'll expand it into uh, a lot of detail. So that's pretty much how everything works. You receive a URL, it takes it apart, it finds the appropriate uh, responder class in here. Uh, you know, if I wanted to find out if this is a property, slewing, okay, then it calls on get, and then it tells me which device number it's talking about, does a connected check, tries to get the slewing property. If it gets it, it returns the value as JSON. Otherwise, it will return uh, an exception JSON packet and tell the server that's what you send back to the client. So everything here, well, you've already, you already know, everything's here to handle all the pieces, including some of the mistakes that you can make. And uh, that pretty much does it. Before I leave you, I want to give you a little bit more of a tour of the documentation and again, encourage you to use this. We've seen the Alpaca, Alpaca device quick start. We looked at the developer roadmap which uh, is a guided tour through the and the interface implementation modules such as dome.py or rotator.py. This introduction has a lot of good info. When I was making this uh, video, I found out this is a bad link. It turns out that had been changed just a few days ago and I didn't get to this. So my apologies. However, the Alpaca API reference, just so you know, is on the ASCOM website under documents. And then, well, all this stuff is there. And you can go back down here to Alpaca API reference version nine and grab it as a uh, PDF document which it's doing right now, although it's not being captured. So um, I want to point out that the ASCOM website is a place you should go. There's so much information here, documents uh, and specs, information. For Alpaca developers, you might want to look at this. There's some good information here and a lot of great references here. And well, here's the API reference again. I'm wondering if it's linked up here. I think it probably works, although it's PDF, so uh, it, it you won't see it in um, the video recording just because of the way I have things set up here. So there's this introductory th thing, and it shows how that, well, I'm, I'm just going to not try to go through everything and explain all the same stuff that's in here, but... Anyway, there's all that. And last but not least is a description uh, of the modules, the boilerplate modules. And it says right here, and I really mean this, don't even bother looking at this unless you've got some sort of problem because uh, I already had a couple people who looked at that first and then decided they had to do everything themselves and they just didn't even get the fact that it was all done for them. So uh, don't look at this until you have a problem. And that's pretty much it. Okay, thanks for viewing this video. I should point out that there is a forum 
within which people discuss these things. It's this driver and application development support forum. And the link to it is right in the docs for this uh, SDK. Please join us. Um, the core team will try to help. Other people there who've done this will try to help. And uh, we just want to have fun and accomplish our goals. Again, thank you, and we'll see you soon.